In our last video, we talked about the core instruments that make up our panel. In our case, it's the primary flight display, which is an Aspen Evolution 1000. Uh, that's followed over here on the right by our GPS Navcom, which is an Avidyne un IFD unit. In this case, it's an Avidyne IFD 540. And then below that, we have our transponder, which is actually a multi-hazard display, the L3 Lynx. And so these three instruments really make up the core of our panel and as you saw we had to figure out how they were actually going to fit and get uh, supported and that came up uh, resulted in um, a very innovative structure that had us creating this rail system um, that secures to the next bulkhead and really we had to use kind of that old school method of trying and fitting and just trying to figure things out instead of just using CAD or some type of computer software to do it and so we have done that and we figured out using this original um, bulkhead here from Titan where these instruments are going to fit and now it's time to build the rest of the panel because what we decided to do at that point is take the actual measurements of where these instruments went in this panel and then move to CAD and put the rest of the instruments in place. So just a reminder, the reason that we're going with this is a, a couple, well, there's a few reasons. First of all, the aircraft is going to be IFR. We want the ability to be able to fly IFR to get to events where you can see the plane in the future. That means air venture, sun and fun, places like that. And so we want the ability to at least fly en route through weather. That means you do need a certified NAVCOM GPS type system here to be able to be approach capable. Um, there are a lot of experimental PFDs or primary displays on the market, but you can't navigate without a certified navigator. In addition to that, it was really important to me to emulate the Bonanza that we fly all the time and have some consistency when jumping between these two planes. And I absolutely love these instruments. I love flying behind the Aspen Evolution primary flight display. The Max is even brighter than the other units before it, so really love that. And the L3 Lynx is just a fantastic unit. Unit. Touch screen has everything from ground, uh, from uh, looking at uh, hazards, terrain, uh, traffic. Uh, it's, it's really an awesome, awesome unit. So we went from this to deciding how we were going to lay out the rest of the instruments. We wanted to have backups and we wanted to have all sorts of other things to go with it as well. So the big reveal, take this apart and we started with this layout you see here for where we're going to go from this point forward. And again, there's reasons. It may look like a hodgepodge because it's just kind of all taped on here for experimenting, and that's exactly what we did. But actually, there's a lot of rhyme and reason behind it. Um, when we're just uh, messing around, just going up there, doing loops, rolls, and playing around with the Mustang, I love an analog airspeed indicator. And so I wanted to, to make that the next thing that's gonna be actually a, a core part of uh, of our panel and so uh, went for that next and uh, we have that instrument here from uh, UMA uh, it's a great airspeed indicator and um, we're using that uh, in this place um, then we need to be able to manage the engine since this is an automotive conversion uh, it's going to be a V8 uh, engine here an LM4 um, then uh, it's important to have an experimental engine monitor that can be uh, modified in order to uh, be able to manage the different uh, sensors that are going to go along with an automotive conversion, not a traditional CHT EGT type uh, engine monitor. And so in that case, we went here with um, the uh, Bendix King uh, unit here, which is the X.100. Um, uh, this unit's very small, very easy to do. It's, uh, the, it's the same unit as the JPI 350. That goes in next uh, over there, next to it. And then we wanted redundant instruments. These are the RC Allen instruments, extraordinarily lightweight. Look how tiny these things are. Um, really, really lightweight, really, really simple. Love these things. Uh, this is the RCA 2610-3, and then the uh, DG here is the RCA 1510-3 unit. Um, and what's nice is by doing these units, 
we don't need to have a separate compass because we're covered in having magnetometer here, having the other DG unit, everything's all set. So we have these, and then last we've got the AV20 here from U Avionics. That's because I wanted to have a G meter. Uh, it's a combination unit, can give me uh, other information we need, such as the timers that you need, the clock you need for IFR navigation, and tons of other features. It even has a backup attitude indicator built into it. So in theory, we've got three of those uh, in the panel. Again, uh, a little bit of overkill, but it's fun. Um, our trim for our uh, elevator and our rudder are right over here. And this is our autopilot on this side. Let me grab that. And that is uh, the uh, uh, True Track unit here, which is also the Bendix King Aero Cruise 100, which is um, uh, True Track is now part of Bendix King. And so that rounds out our panel. It's going to look a lot nicer when it's the real instruments in place. Um, what's nice about doing this is we can go and experiment. We can do different orientations, get in the cockpit and play with it. And we've already figured out in the case of the switches down here, for example, that we do want to reverse some of these things. For example, we're actually going to switch the way that we have our layout here for our switches. Uh, we originally went with a sequence with the starter on the left, and that's going to be flip-flop. We're going to put that on the right because we've got our left hand working the throttle, our right hand will be working the starter, and we're also going to order all of our switches in a sequence for what the actual start uh, sequence is going to be for the aircraft. So. Anyway, that's a lot of information about this. What I'm now going to do is take this away and we're going to go. We went over to our friends at Fabco and I'll give you a look at what it's like for us to cut out our instrument panel on our T-51 Mustang with this layout so that we can experiment and go from there. Let's have a look. Hey, back here at the shop at Fabco and uh, going to recut the panels now because uh, the last ones had some interference issues with some of uh, where the avionics were. And so uh, moving a couple instruments and making three panels, <laughs> three panels that uh, will uh, uh, allow me to experiment a little bit because if you're going to cut, laser cut, you might as well go and uh, cut all three panels. Let's take a look. panels, uh, all different experiments that we get to run, thanks to Joe here over at Fabco. Let's go see how they go in the airplane. All right, so this is it. This is the instrument panel that we cut, thanks to Joe Delgado over at Fabco. Uh, got that all cut out and uh, we're ready to experiment with that. All I need to do is just uh, mount the instruments in place. I'm just gonna do a quick temporary mounting with like one screw per instrument and put it in the aircraft and see how it looks. Let's put it together.
All right, so everything's in place now except for the main instruments, which we're going to put after it's mounted in the panel. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about before here is the FlexAlert 100. That's a, a multifunction uh, enunciator that we actually make ourselves here at Approach Aviation, it's part of Social Flight. And um, the, uh, this, this will put all the different enunciations in one place, all the different gear enunciations, if starters engage, alternator, over voltage, all the different things uh, that uh, fuel pump, everything that can go into one location will be here. And um, that's really nice. It's only got one downside. It's made for a tricycle gear aircraft. And of course, a P-51 Mustang, in our case, uh, the T-51 Mustang is a tail dragger. And so our three green lights are actually inverted from what they are on the real aircraft. And so that's the only compromise here, but I really like the idea of having all the enunciations in one place. So that's what we went with. Next, let's take this, get it mounted, put in the main instruments and see how it all looks. Before we test mount the panel, let's take a minute to review the structure that we created inside the aircraft to mount both the panel and the sub-panel with the switches and the circuit breakers before we actually get started. Now, what we wanted to do with this is we wanted to make sure that we were able to service both the panel as well as all the different systems that are in the forward cockpit long after this aircraft is actually in service flying around and needs to uh, get regular maintenance. Now the T-51 Mustang just like the original Mustang is a tandem seat aircraft pilot and passenger behind him and then it's also in kind of a bathtub structure right where you don't have any direct side access to do any maintenance you have to go over the top after you slide the canopy back. What you're seeing here is the windshield bow of the aircraft and we've removed uh, the, uh, the forward uh, part of the windshield and all the rest of that structure because that's gonna go in for one final time um, after all this other work is done and after all the wiring, et cetera, is taken care of. So what we did is we created a structural plate, a structural member that is an outline of the panel that covers both the top and bottom section, what I'm calling the sub panel with switches. We cut that out using our friend's help over at uh, Fabco with Joe Delgado there and his laser cutter, and then had worked with his welders to actually weld on a piece that went all the way around the perimeter. This flange is what the top skin of the aircraft will actually mount to. That gives it all this structural rigidity. And then the last step is we used a machine that he has there in order to go and mount these nut plates in so that the top panel and sub panel can easily be screwed into place and then unscrewed, removed completely from the aircraft. So that's the assembly itself. Now we can switch over and test fit our new panels. Well, that's it. Our instrument panel is now in place. It uh, uh, obviously will come back out to get all wired up, but using our approach fast act system, that's really going to be a lot of plug and play, not a lot of custom wiring, which is going to be super, super cool. Uh, we'll mount the hub. We've got a lot more work to do, but it's pretty cool to be able to see the layout and see it inside here and make sure that we have everything set because our next step is going to be covering all of this, doing the final installation on our uh, glare shield, on our top D skin, on our windshield, all of this stuff put in knowing that our instrument panel fits and that everything works. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. 
Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free Social Flight mobile apps for Apple and Android devices, including our Fly to Win Challenge on your mobile device. Just fly to airports, get points, and you're entered to win into our contest. It's so, so cool. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Until next time, I wish you all blue skies.